Hey guys, welcome back. Marius here, Walheim there, and let's get this game started. 40 tips I'm going to give you. This is me going in the game for the 300 days. That's why the video I took so long. I don't want to give you some brief, I don't know, four hour experience and then, wow, find a, a rock or iron, whatever. Okay, so these tips, everything will be there. I am showing, I'm enabling right now the first tip you should be able, able to see and I will quickly explain, like really quickly. If you have any questions, ask please down in comment section. I will give you the answer. I'll try to be brief because there are 40 tips I'm going to give to you. So first of all, as funny as it sounds, I am not joking, the game tricks you thinking death is something easy because you can find your tombstone, pick up your items and then you think you lose nothing wrong. You lose and the little bird will tell you but you lose the skills. The problem is currently I have played and I am at maximum basically at the end of current version of the game. All bosses down, crafted, built everything, I've seen everything. I still have only half of the... Um, that's the highest. I, I'm, I'm, I have because I died and I'm trying to explain how ridiculously painful actually it is with the death if you take it too lightly you will suffer because there are some awesome things for example I can give you the blocking the block value actually increases can increase your block power by 50 maximum level shield gives me 100 I can add another 50, that's half of current block power, only by skill, if I'm not dying. But I died a lot, so now you know, also, <laughs> don't take it lightly. But when you do die, and you will, uh, trust me on this, learn the corpse run. Corpse run, I'll quickly explain, I will not deliberately kill myself, but the tombstone that is left on the point where you die, use... Um, respawn at your um, latest uh, bed or, or spawn point you run to the corpse the, the the tombstone when you pick up every single one of the items that's important if you leave even one of them the tombstone will still be there only when the last item is picked out you receive a buff that buff is healing you for a minute or something uh, if you are killed during next 10 or 15 minutes you don't le lose any skill points and you can run faster. I think the stamina drain is less. So what I'm trying to explain here, use that one minute, that actual huge boost, because you most likely will die in between enemies or in some weird, I don't know, uh, um, biome or something, something. Use that one minute because that's a huge buff. Learn to uh, get out of maximum out of that uh, death you just had. Third tip is eat. Eat three times because, as you can see at the corner uh, of my screen, there are blinking items. That means my food run out. Basically, I am getting hungry. This is when it starts blinking, it means I can eat again. Important. Why this is important? That's kind of no brainer. Obviously, if you're hungry, you eat. I'm carrying all the time three items. It doesn't matter what kind of course the better food uh, the, the main bonuses you have but the idea is since beginning you can find berries shrooms and and other items in the forest so you always should be able to eat something and eat all three of those boxes as you can see there stop blinking what i gained health it's cool you can die as fast but what is more important those foods always give also stamina look at that this this yellow bar this is my stamina and why i'm putting so much e uh, emphasizes on this running jumping building crafting um, planting tree uh, planting vegetables in your garden chopping tree everything you do, swimming everything you do uses stamina blocking hitting avoiding dodging everything uses stamina Meaning the more stamina you have, basically the more you can do in the game. No matter where and what level where you are. So that is important why you need to have three foods all the time. Uh, that's just simple as that. Next one is, especially for the beginners, 
uh, sleep at night. Currently, this is a nighttime. I'll try to demonstrate, but at nighttime, there is a higher chance of spawning elite bosses, elite enemies. They are literally, you see, they are coming, they are going. Night is danger. Simple as that. When you are not sure, when you are a little bit afraid, when you are at the beginning, when you don't have a lot of wolves uh, chained at your base, simply go to bed. Not only you will pass the danger time, also everything that is happening during the night time is basically fast forwarded. If you load iron and, and coal in your smelter, uh, if you wait for the food to grow, if you basically anything that is happening while you sleep, for example, the same spinning wheel, 40 items I can add and then it slowly turns it into what it's called linen thread everything that is fast forward so basically you gain you don't lose the time it's not skipping it's basically fast forwarding so sleeping is absolutely great especially at the beginning later when you want to en uh, encounter bosses and everything then at night you have more you can have more fun if you don't sleep next is avoid debuff this is something i can give you right away it's it's really painful and i will give you of course, bleeding effect, toxic effect, I'm not talking about those. If enemy hits you, obviously you want, can, want, want to avoid, but one of the painful things in the game, look at this, what happens if you jump in the water or, or there is rain going on, or at night there is also cold. Basically, there are two debuffs that you can avoid easily. One is when you are wet, another when you are cold, because you can check what happens, sorry, not here, but here, you can check if I'm wet, my health regen, regen and stamina is down. When you combine this debuff with cold, if you are staying out at night, at night you always will have the cold. It is increasing even more. It's it's basically multiplying. So, what I'm trying to explain, if you are out of food, if you're out in the night and it's also raining, you will have so much debuff uh, for stamina regen you can forget about running anywhere or fighting or something. You will run in problems. So avoiding, for example, if you can jump and swim over to other side, but you see there's a fight will happen in other side, go around. If you're not wet, that definitely helps. So yeah, anyways, I'm spending too much time on this. Let's move forward. Always get a buff. I'm talking about rested buff. I'm not talking about po poison, poison potions and, and other things you can also have but this rested buff i'll show you how easily it is you need to have uh be near fireplace if you haven't figured this out come on move dog doggo and you need to be in shelter you see at the top we will fetch right away the next tip i am you can wait and see how many seconds it's 10 or 15 seconds when the rested buff will have higher it will refresh with absolutely high uh, countdown number 21 that's the highest why because i have comfort how i got comfort this is when you build furniture a uh, simple uh, explanation is when you pick up your items to build there is a section furniture long story short everything you see here out of curiosity and comfort, build, build better things, build table, build um, uh, those rugs, every single one of them. These banners, build at least one of them. They are increasing this comfort level. This is comfortable house. And I believe these also, I, I can be sure you can test yourself, but the thing is, the more awesome your shelter is, the higher comfort, the longer the rested bonuses that's simple sim simple as that yeah one thing i need to point out also uh, 14 rested i think currently is kind of maximum i think there is bigger bonfire i can get it higher but 21 minute is i needed to mention a daytime nighttime 21 minute is daytime and nine minutes in this game is nighttime so when you skip you skip basically nine minutes approximately and when there's daytime, I have having buff 21 minute will last for full day. 
basically when it's getting cold, when it's getting uh, dark outside and the rested buff is running out, I'm going back home, picking everything back up and then it's awesome. If you're wondering, again, spending too much time, rested bonus gives health regen region plus 50% and stamina region 100, basically double. The stamina is regenerating double. So having pay, pay attention to those and always run around with without debuff and with buff. Learn to make quick shelter. This is something I'll try to quickly demonstrate. This is especially in the beginning. There is a situation when you will uh, gather your uh, tin ore or copper ore or chopping wood and suddenly your tool is broken. How to fix it? Simple as that. You need to build crafting station. This is always the first. Just find a spot, put it down. I'm trying to find a good spot, but there's no good spots. Every spot is bad here. Um, takes too long. So, obviously that enables you to build, but you can't use it because it requires you to have a shelter. We quicker, I don't know if there's some quicker uh, way, but how I do it, always put two because otherwise it will be too exposed. And then I think this is a little bit, yeah, still too exposed because the stupid roof, but something like this, sorry, uh, bad positioning. Because this is absolute minimum, I always build but you need to have this in the middle. Should be. Come on, come on game, why are you screwing up my video? <laughs> okay, fine. Because shelter does not mean only, only this um, roof and everything. So now you can repair your items. Obviously when you're higher level you need the blacksmith to go back to your base or build and carry around forge for you, which is not cool. We'll move forward. This is a quick shelter, um, which can be extended. Just two more. I'm just building as quick as possible. Why? Because you need those. Damn it. Yeah, it's ugly. I know, I know, I know. Um, you need to have your respawn point. Probably I will not be able to have it because it's too exposed because this is really bad <laughs> bad place to build try to find something nicer but what i'm trying to explain this what i'm building right now which looks ridiculously ugly is your possible point where you can respawn after you die this is so you don't have to run back this is how small a spawn point set if you die, you can, as you can see, you need to explore a lot. You don't run to, need to run back from your base. Okay, this is the smallest shelter repair and your spawn spot. Okay, this is the minimum you have to build in order to explore um, efficiently. Um, another thing, I'm not going to show it here, but I will show you how it looks like is there's a cooking station where you can cook your food. Obviously, in such shelter you can't spend the night, you need a fireplace. I am advising to put cooker like this. Why? Because you can cook four meat at once, but more importantly, this is restricting you to run accidentally in fire and cotton fire. Simple as that. Simple little trick to get that use usage. Next one is mine the smoke. This is something important as you can see. Uh, this game heavily, well not heavily, but tries to imitate physics and smoke. You need to let it out in some way. Uh, in another way, there you can't have open, just open roof because if there's a rain going on, the fire will stop. Simple as that, and yet you can't sleep, you can't have your fire buff, you can't have your rested bonus. So yeah, the smoke is important to let it out and don't stand in it, because once you... Okay, I'm even burning, but if you stand in smoke, you are receiving damage. 
That... Ah. Stup stupid me. Stupid me. Can't find a place where is smoke. Of course, I have a lot of smoke everywhere. Burning brazers, as you can see. Smoked. Uh, if you don't pay attention, I have actually died on this roof because I was out of food. I thought, I'm just building. I don't need food. Right? No, wrong. Without any buff, without any food, you have 28 health. And if you jump for this height, for this height, you literally can kill yourself in your own base. All right, smoke is one thing. Put food on outpost chest. This is something why I left the building there. Um, when you go out and travel, you understand such shelters are needed. Well, not particularly this one, but you get the idea. Put a chest there and in that chest my advice is put some at least something some food why because when you go out and mine your copper or something something and troll suddenly attacks or something you die what happens is when you respawn at your spawn point which will look like this you are without armor without tools without nothing you are naked hungry nothing all the buffs everything everything is gone which means you have 25 health and zero armor. Then if you open your chest and quickly grab a bite, at least you will have this 40 stamina here and you will have a uh, healing uh, effect and stamina and whatnot. This is, you will get the idea once you die and you see how you naked run to your tombstone and then basically any enemy hitting you will kill you because you are naked, you have zero armor. So yeah, having that food will give you extra ability to get to back to your tombstone, then picking up all the items and using that corpse run buff basically will get you far, far uh, further than you think. All right, moving on faster because we are running out of time. I'm too long again. Repair and rebuild is free with asterisks. Um, repair is when you have armor and items and everything in this game it costs nothing doesn't matter what level where you don't need any resources which is awesome and rebuilding is also important that i learned to i had wrong impression because always games when you build something build something and destroy it and build it and destroy it, usually games tend to take some items in this game you have to take back every single one of the items spent while building this is important to understand because if you need something to build, let me pick something, for example, this, yeah, this item. This requires to have a forge. If I want to put some item here, I can't because I don't have forge here. You don't need to build another one here. Just go get your forge, destroy it, pick your items, place them, place the forge here, build whatever you want, and then you can carry it back. This is absolutely amazing and one thing why I have asterisk there, sorry clicking like a maniac, is these items that use fuel. Uh, not only this, also this brazier at the top. Uh, once you build it and destroy it, the coal, the fuel used for them, they are gone. That's something where the you don't get all the items put in, 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 in uh, building something. That's the only exception but everything else mostly there's just everything will be given back all right moving on we have learned to use r this is of course on, 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 on keyboard uh, pay attention if you have one item and then you have another item for example shield and whatever item, uh, weapon you have um, it is good to have when you press R, you put everything on your shoulder, um, back, which means you don't have this debuff that says movement speed decreased. Now you can run swiftly. If enemy occurs, fight happens, you press R again and both of these items are immediately equip equipped. You don't need to press one and or another or sometimes in the fight when you have this habit to quickly press both, sometimes you end up without shield. And if you try to block without shield, well, you receive damage. And then you are in the middle of fight and you're like, why am I dying? Oh, right, I need another one. 
So learn to utilize one button that equips both items. All right, moving on, next thing. Ah, oh, damn it, sorry. We have learn, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to miss uh, learn to master the fight walk. I'll try to s explain, but not spend too much time on this. In the fight, as I explained previously, you everywhere, whatever you do, for example, running, you spend stamina, blocking stamina, fighting stamina, killing stamina, dodging stamina, swimming, everything stamina. Damn it, my wolves will... <laughs> my wolves killed every enemy. All right, I'll try to get... The one thing, uh, walk in a fight, that the thing is, when you see nothing happens, obviously, but if I block, a small portion of my stamina is gone because I'm blocking. If you walk away, while you block and there is no incoming attack, it doesn't use stamina. Usually games, uh, in, in other games you use, but here I'm, I'm demonstrating what happens if you hold the shield and walking backwards. Don't run, because that will drain your stamina. In this way, if the attack connects, it's still blocked and you lose a little bit stamina. But if you walk away, as you can see, slower enemies, <clears throat> in most cases, you can clearly avoid. And while doing this, you are safe, you block attacks, and you also regain stamina if you use too much blocking uh, strong enemies. So this is a cool tactic. Uh, of course, works only with shields. You can't block without shield. It's, yeah, it's going through. Well, these are two weak enemies, but in general... Um, blocking with shield is always better. <laughs> so yeah, learn to walk in a fight so that saves and uh, actually restores your stamina and then uh, yeah, you can use that stamina to parry or kill enemy. Parry? What the hell is parry? This is something weird the game kind of explains but doesn't because once you parry it still says block. When enemy is attacking you before the the hit the, the attack is connected if you press weekly block enemy is pushed back and staggered while staggered um, they receive additional damage this is absolutely huge to master against harder enemies these little piggies do nothing but whatever level you are whatever enemy you are facing even ranged enemies before they release the arrow on precise timing if you use this block it will be hurried you need to master it uh, every enemy has different um, animation and everything you need to learn it most important part about this is once they are staggered immediately attack because that will have extra damage and that's how you can deal with um, tough enemies quite fast as soon as you have shield that's, and, and basically parry, mustard parry, then you can deal with them easily. Uh, next thing I need to point out, there are different weapons, obviously, but they don't differ only with obvious things. You can mouse over, you see this one has blunt and pierce types. Every enemy has um, weakness and resistance against specific types. You can find that on the internet, which is boring way, or even better, you can test yourself and that's all cool. That's not what I'm talking about here. I need to bring up something else to show why. I'll show you why. Because they differ also in terms of attack. That is important. For example, mace, you see, it swings around. I swing around its area of damage. If you pick weapon, th this particular, it always attacks in front of me. I will never be able to hit enemies in, in wide, wider range until, of course, I use special attack, which is huge, which is awesome and everything. But that uses a lot of stamina. So every weapon, that's what that's what I'm suggesting, every weapon has a spe special 
kind of attack. For example, you see, this is also kind of area of damage and special attack. One of my favorites, huge thrust uh, with extra power, extra damage in front of you. And actually, I need to bring uh, <laughs> the, the funny thing. The recently built only. Okay, any, anyways, pick this one up. Uh, knife. Knife has pretty amazing. Yes, you saw it right. Jump forward and attack. That's a special skill. Special attack. Otherwise, just smashing. Anyways, learn the difference. They are not only blunt, piercing, and then slashing. They also differ in a way how the weapon actually swings, the changes, because you need to connect with enemy. Anyways, too much time spent on this point. Moving on. Don't fight on mountains and hills. This is something the game does not manage very well. I I can't show you because my wolves well killed everyone, but the oh there are still enemies. So the thing is um you will notice it quite uh, soon if you're fighting somewhere here you most likely will your your attack will not connect. There, if there's enemy up there and you hit, you hit the ground. Enemy, of course, will tr will hit you. Sometimes not. So it's pretty hard to predict which will, which attack will land and which will fail. So easier way, especially when you have a shield and you know what you're doing. If you have a fight coming up, find a place somewhere where it's at least not that hilly, you know, and fight there. Simple as that. Otherwise, you can, you will have some. Uh, bad time, okay? Uh, next thing, again, damn it, my wolves. So the next thing is um, master your bow skill. And bow skill, of course, is something that allows you to hit targets from far distance. My quick advice, uh, this is the best sword, not sword, bow in the game, which shoots pretty straight arrows, meaning it's powerful, right? It, it shoots straight. The first ball shoots with huge arc. And simple thumb of rule of thumb is when you think this will connect, aim a little bit higher. That's especially for the first bows. Once you master your your arc and distance, because it's your physics and ge geometry, uh, you can pretty much secure every single hit. Well, the far away aim higher that's that's basically the the tip here explore with two portals this is something i failed as well once in later in the game i'm not pushing you to travel and get portals right away but you will find them you will get them you will have the resources so that is all good once you do and you go out exploring and uh, getting new resources you will need to find not find, you will figure out to bring a portal. But the thing is, once you have a portal, it's not enough. You need another, because portals are uh, two buildings connected. You need two portals to be actually tra uh, able to travel through. So one thing, I can quickly try to show. Only 10 of these are needed, but I'll show you. So whenever you are traveling far away, exploring new things, blah, 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 and then you find a spot where you want to, f or you need to come back home to repair your weapons. You build a portal and then you figure out, ooh, I need to connect somehow. And that's why you need two portals. That's, that's the core uh, of this, this advice. Before you travel, before you pick one portal, uh, in terms of materials in your bag, rename or get one portal of these prepared for your journey for example i am calling it x because it is uh, exploration and going on exploration then once you're far away you build the portal and then you name it exploration and only now you are able to travel back once it's connected but don't make this mistake traveling with the portal far away and then like figuring oh i don't have where to connect to at home Right? That's basically that tip. Next is grow the food. Simple and stupid as it sounds. Before you can grow the food as such, you 
will be hunting, picking um, berries from forest, everything that takes longer time because you need to find it. Once you start growing, and that happens when you have bronze tools. That, that I can tell you. Not further, not sooner. Uh, you craft a cultivator, that's a bronze item, and afterwards you need to find a seed. Do it your own, but the thing is, at, that, at this moment when you grow your food, you are not relying on picking at that from forest, which is absolutely a game changer, because you can spend more time on things you want to do. Uh, second, everyone already at this point learned that taming, if not, I have a special video of everything about it, but my advice, what, well, my brother and friend figured out, if you don't have a star boar, it's not, it seems like it's not worth taming a boar. So casual boars without stars are not worth it. Why? Because once they are tamed, they eat your food. Basically, what boar does is convert one type of food, vegetable or mushrooms, into meat and leather. Leather is, you don't need it that much. But the thing is, only starred boars, or two star, best case scenario, drop higher rate of food and uh, the meat. And only then it is uh, suitable actually to grow them. And as you can see, now I can pick up quite a lot of meat, but if that those were casual pigs, that was not worth it. So yeah, when once you are get to the po uh, point to tame something, aim for at least one star. Otherwise, there is no point of taming those little piglets. All right, moving forward. Let's stop moving like that. Are there enemies? That's that's it. Okay, are the enemies dodge? I showed you how to move away and block. If the incoming the attack is really tough, you will have a huge portion of stamina gone. Basically, I'm talking trolls, the same wolves, and elementals, bosses. That's, that's my advice. When you are blocking, you are already making sure uh, you will block the hit. But before enemy does the hit, another way is press spacebar. This jump, if the attack is too heavy, will use stamina, but that stamina will be way less than actually blocking. And if the incoming hit is so heavy, most likely you will not be able to block everything. So, what we learned from that is, when you dodge, you avoid fully incoming damage, and secondly, you save stamina. But this is only against hard enemies. Don't do that against piggies or something like that. That, that will be not worth it. As you saw previously, my current uh, blocking is use not non stamina. All right, moving forward, scout for bees. Simple as that. At the beginning of the game, I'm not going to run. There are abandoned buildings everywhere, smaller, bigger, something. When you are in the buildings, look upwards uh, at the roof because there you can find a beehive. Destroy it with arrow or something. Don't don't bother uh, avoiding the poison. It will nothing but it drops honey and sometimes also a bee ah, I'm gonna check bee queen yes queen bee I was close enough and the thing is why I'm suggesting such a stupid idea because honestly that honey will be for some period of time will make a difference it needs for other recipes but at the beginning remember at the beginning when you don't have these um, you can't grow items, uh, gr grow food. You don't. You couldn't find a boar with the star. You rely on the food that you find in the forest. So this is the first way, actually, how you can get a food that sits there at your home. At the morning, you wake up, collect your honey, and you can eat it. Well, you're hungry, and that's first source of food, which is actually pretty easy obtainable. The problem is it's random chance for those beehives to spawn. So my advice, especially at the beginning of exploration, find one. The next tip, quite quickly, uh, Ctrl F, if you didn't know, removes user interface. It, at that this point, game everything still happens. You can still use R if you use the weapons or equip something else. 
but this is the way how you can make your awesome screenshots for your friends to make them jealous that you are better Viking. And of course, Control F3 um, shows back up user interface, and we are moving on. Mark everything. Hi, Mark. So, uh, as you can see, normally, every you have only landscape. These items I added myself when I exploring. Um, yeah, Tsukas, that means boars, in Latvian, but anyways. Uh, you can come up with your own idea, but you have few items here. What to pick, what kind of icons you have. Whenever I have a building or, or abandoned or, or tower, I mark it and name it. So I know that's a, there's a tower, there's a village. Uh, um, round I use for silver, there's an egg. Mm, here the C stands for copper. This stands for uh, mined copper, there's not anymore, but there's a huge hole in the ground, so I need to be aware of that. This is a tower, this is a black forest that stands for my portal names. Anyways, it comes in handy way more often than you might think, even marking where there is enemies to avoid them, where is there still copper. The, the crypts, those stand for crypts where I can get iron. Anyways, you get the idea. Mark them. Mark my words and mark your map, you will need them. Find the trader, this is something of course you can use if your friend or someone else in their map, in their server has found the trader. Why? Because trader sells, there are three items that I think of that are really needed. One is this uh, superhuman strength, so you can carry way more um, weight, I think it adds 200, let me check, 400, oh, 150, still a lot. Then a uh, fishing rod and then particularly if you want to build some items, there is a crafting material that is only purchased from the trader. And honestly, that's just part of it. Even more important, these items you find, coins, a ruby, amber pearl, Amber and silver necklace. They all have only one purpose. We sold, exchanging coins, and then with the coins you purchase things. They take so much space, so once you find your trader and purchase everything you want, then you can easily, with ease of mind, throw out that amber, which is absolutely ridiculously not valuable. So you, at that point you understand you don't need that stuff anymore. So you can have more stuff <laughs> um, in your chest. So, I control and shift usage. This is something that obviously you probably figured out already or game told you. Is to split items in half. It usually puts in half. But when you are going on an adventure, for example, and you want to pick up your um, portal, you don't want to bring extra items at all. You want precise amount of these to be with you to build to be able to build a, a portal i need also the core so nothing else that's very useful but another thing control if you hold the control then you all all the stacks are moved in in, in correct well not correct but in in the box and, and back and forth so that's it shift and control usage is i think one of the absolutely um, most used controls in the game uh, controls, I mean keys. So, build with stairs, this is something I'll try to... Or sorry, put the wood down. Uh, this is something just advice. Whenever you build something, this, this is my favorite. When you build something, you need a specific angle to connect. I've seen people whine how building is tough. Well, basically, they don't know this trick. So, this... this um, why I use these stairs? They are really easy to connect. They bring me upwards and forward, so whenever I need to build something, I always use these stairs because then I can access and build whatever I want right here. Yes, exactly like that. And then when I'm done, I climb down, destroy just the bottom, and as you know, you get all the resources back. So these stairs I just showed are absolutely needed to build everything and anything higher than than yourself. Use them. Afterwards destroy and that's it. That's the basic trick. 
Learn to sort and store. This is something, especially this point to my brother. As you can see, I have my own idea how to store, but basically here is the food. Here is everything that is stone related. Here is everything I can pick up from. Why? Because the game gives you a lot of, here are all the um, force and a little bit, yeah, rest of the things. Here are all the trophies. Why? Because as you can see, there are many, many, many items in the game. And if you have just an ass there, you will spend more time finding for that stupid core or call or, or something uh, than actually playing. So that's a bit painful. And as you can see, I placed a few of these boxes where they are needed. For example, this is one of, there are two smelters. And right next to them, I have wood for making coal and coal and iron uh, ore to have smelt, to, to, to start smelting if I need to. But yeah, that, that is important. If you haven't uh, used to sort and, and, and such things, start about now. Put items on the wall, this is something also, I've seen a lot of people failing at this. Yes, you need um, this um, fine wood, which is not that rare, to be honest. But um, once you have it and you can build these things on the walls, that item stands, every other item that is left over you can place there. So it doesn't take space in the box. And let me explain if you haven't figured out, you have first items then you have bronze items then you have iron items and then you have and then you have armor and there will be leftover items that are you can drop in the river if you want to but for example my bronze sword now i'm of course silver sword black metal sword ahead so i place it here just so it stands for my shield or my previous items or my trophies but yeah save your space and um, yeah, put them on the wall. Dismantle the ship, this is something, oh yeah, I still have a ship. When you travel far away, remember there's always enemies wandering around. Even if they're at that exact moment, you don't see any enemy there. They tend to attack your ship. If they attack your ship and destroy, that's not a problem. There will be items dropped on the river. If it's too deep, you will not get them. Nails, for example, will be um, uh, sink at the bottom. And for example, if you're here near the coast, kind of don't see problem at the first. The problem is, in the game, if you drop items on the ground and don't pick up, I don't know, two, three nights, something, days, nights, uh, they disappear. And I have lost two ships in, in, in this way. I was far away, my ships uh, was at home, they destroyed it. I still forwarded a few days and the items were also gone. If you don't want that to happen to you, uh, take your ship. Don't do that on a deep... Um, ah, fail. No, we will not. Uh, don't do that where the um, water is too, too deep. Drive it at the coast. Yes, as far as you can. And what I mean by dismantle, it's simple. Get your axe out, <laughs> that most effective item, weapon, and simply destroy it. Once you have destroyed your boat, right away, here was the items and I picked up every single one of them. So now I can explore the woods and something something. When I miss my home, I can come back here. Of course you need this ah, workbench and voila my boat is kind of packed in my inventory <laughs> so yeah that's a little trick and if you think your boat is secure somewhere trust me it will be destroyed <laughs> simple as that all right moving on next next steps we are moving to slow make base near Borshine. this is something i failed myself quickly explain there are shrines i have marked them with this specific icon and I don't know if there's any near... Anyways, when you read the text on the shrine, sometimes it says something aligned along the lines. Boars um, are here in the wilderness, they roam around, something, something. You, you will figure out the text that mentions boars. That shrine is particularly valuable because around there 
at least four or five boars will spawn all the time. You don't need to tame them. You don't need to feed them. You don't need to do nothing. So if your base is somewhere near, boom, you're free meat. You just need to pull out any weapon. You can, they attack you. You basically aggro them and then simply kill with one hit and that's your meat. So for example, that's one. Pay attention to that room if you make a new base. Another, of course, is um, best case scenario, you don't build your base in the river or something where you need to pull your ships out and it's that making you trouble, for example, this narrow passage. But if you have an open, for example, here, open ocean where you can travel around and explore, that would be my advice. And of course, you don't want to build your base near the river bank, uh, the, the water, and you think you can <laughs> travel somewhere when it's actually, yeah, you can't, it's a lake. So yeah, pay attention to those boar um, brines, that's highly valuable for, for anyone, and that's it. Outposts on tower is something I will quickly show. That's why I have marked those buildings. Mm. Dark Forest 2, I believe, is the one. One of my outposts. So, I have marked the buildings. When I travel, I see a tower. It's abandoned. I just mark on a map. Because if I run around and suddenly I need an outpost, best way how to do it, as you can see, this was just an outpost. Uh, reason, reasons why to do it is it is from the stone. You don't need to carry around stone cut what it's called. I will get it. Not a forge, but stone cutter, yes. Uh, it's there, it's built. You just need to add basically a roof over it and that's one bonus. You don't need to build, so you just capture abandoned um, tower. But even more important is you can get a fire basically out up there. If you build your own outpost from wood, uh, you need to either raise the ground or, or carry around stone and a lot of trouble. Here you can see, you can utilize the, the fact that there is a stone and you can put fire on it and add cooking station and that's it. You are up there, safe, without spending too much resources. Uh, stone building with fire. This is the best. Uh, if you haven't figured this out, I don't know what the hell you are doing. Anyways. Let me see what's the next tip. Maybe I need to go back, maybe not. Yeah. This is important because there are many metals. You will find copper, you will find... I don't know if that counts as spoiling, but you know in your real life as well there, there are many metals. But what game does not tell you is how much every single one of them you will need. And you will end up like me gathering a lot of bronze because you think you're smart, you build everything from bronze, then you move on, you need iron, then you need silver, then you need dark silver, dark metal, and then like the bronze is just sitting here, there's pointless to gather it. That's why there's a, this, this my advice, bronze, silver, and dark metal, you don't need. And by bronze, it also counts as tin and copper. And iron, the simple iron will be most used item. Why? Because it used, you will need to use it on ships, on <coughs> on furniture, on, on, on these big uh, chests. Uh, then you have every single tool, I think. Well, most of the tools, armor, weapons, everything. Iron is the most used metal. Just bear that in your mind. If you think to gather even more bronze, look ahead. Maybe you can move forward and gather another metal. And the last one, there's no tools. One axe, but... Uh, yeah, there is no armor from black metal as well. And there is no, yeah, black metal really is, yeah. It uses a lot if you need to upgrade, of course, but just take the tip, take the tip. Don't be, <laughs> anyways, more things you need to know is two items stop spawning enemies around you. One of them is, I already showed, is this workbench. So, for example, if this neck spawns here and I place a workbench, it should not spawn. It can wander in here, but it will not spawn. And another building is a fireplace. I think all three of them counts as them, but the basic. The problem is fireplaces, it needs to be lit 
it's need to be filled with fuel, with, with um, yeah, wood, and only when it burns, then uh, it, it counts. When it yeah stops burning, then yeah, this this workbench is better. In the sense, it does not require any additional fuel or something. That you need to t take in account if you make an output something to stop enemies spawning near, place some workbench and fireplace. Um, <laughs> this is another special uh, welcome to my friend. He was like, add it, add it to your tips because it was not fun. He died. He died at one of my outposts. The thing is simple. <sighs> Do I need to demonstrate everything? I remember some of the comments that said, yeah, you talk about things, but you don't show us how it happens. And I, fine. How it happens is simple. Portal allows you to travel through. Basically, you jump in when it works and you end up in other side. If you carry any metal and also egg and, and some other items, um, I think actually that's it. You can't bring them through portal. And it, not only you can't bring, the portal does not work. So if you have a metal in your pocket, and I have in a tower up there my um, portal, which I usually have, then my friend run through and simply fall down and die. Funny in death, that's on him because he forgot to unload metal out of his pocket. And only th now I can jump in. So advice is quite simple uh, to avoid such friend death. Place a wall behind <laughs> your um, portal now. Doesn't matter if you have or you don't have your... Yeah, you will not die, okay? That's it. You're welcome, my friend. <laughs> Next step is um, food stack for tank. This is something I found to, to myself ridiculously a long time it took for me. So when you need to feed any animal, not only boars, but only, for example, wolves that I have, um, what I did, that's just me, stupid me, dropped one by one in a stack, because obviously you don't want to drop a stack so they um, eat everything. That's not happening. When you drop an item's uh, stack, if they are hungry, they come to the stack and pick only one item. That's just for stupid me, maybe. But don't be worried that you drop full stack. They eat one by one. Not only boars, but as I explained, that happens also with wolves. So don't be afraid to drop full stack. All right, all right, cool. Let's move on. Chopping one wood. Oh my God, this is hard to explain. What are you doing it? So, um, what happens is, this is hard to demonstrate. This is. Actually, the proof that I already demonstrated it once. Pay attention how that uh, that is not only a, uh, for the food. That's huge in-game logic that you need to understand. Look how much I take the uh, make damage. Bad example. I need another example. Those woods no. So if I hit the food, see why only thirty-five? What the hell is going on? Should be way higher. 41, okay, better, 42, 46, yes, well the number is random of course, but you see 46 is the amount you can make if you connect with one, one hit, one, one connection, that's it. Look what happens if you connect two items and hit two trees at once. 32, 24. Basically, it divides the total damage and it re reduces. So you can't... If your weapon makes uh, 40 damage and you hit one enemy, you will make 40 damage. If you hit four enemies, it will hit every single one of them with only 10. And that's how the game works, which is quite weird. As you can see, three I, three, I hit three enemies, every single one of them with 15 only. Why? Because the total damage is divided by how many times uh, the hit connected. This is even... I'm going deeper than that. Many times when you see a stump, it really takes a lot of time to get them. Why? I will show you why. Because, pay attention, 
how many connections my hit makes. Okay, this was one. I need to find another bad example. Usually the stumps are uh, down somewhere inside the, the, the landscape. I need to find some. And then, oh yeah, this, this, this will be good. So the thing is, if you make a connection with stone, with ground, with anything, that damage will not make full damage. You see only 22. Oh my god, so so little damage. And when it's stumped, only 17. You see? If you hit something else, even the ground, you need to hit the ground as well, you will make so little damage and you will be so annoyed. So the tip basically is for you to understand how the game system works. It's only... It, it, it also can... Um, happens with the weapons so if you think you are really smart and you hit many enemies or many trees with one hit at the end that's the same damage that if you hit one by one so when you want to have effective chopping don't aim for uh, hit many trees at once that's why the tip is chopping one wood if you make one connection it actually is way faster for example this is my tree I, I will never do something like this because it takes too long time. If I hit only one, only one, 52. So now with only one chop, I get faster two chops, trees down. And the same goes for the stump. Yeah. You get the idea. You see, I hit the ground. Pay attention, you see? First connection on ground and then half of the damage only on, on the stump it's really ridiculous and i recently found it out so now you know as well how that game calculates hits and damage and everything transport with ship this is something i quickly explain no no need to do extra for example there is a dark forest you see there's a copper and everything i can travel by feet don't do that ships are made for that um probably the, the first draft that's not a good idea to travel with that at all. But um, the ships themselves, they travel faster their way. They can carry more items. The, 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 the limitations you have, how, how, how much you can carry, is so little. So if you think to carry around, yeah, ships is the way. This is Viking game. And if you just actually assign them, if you think the cart is another good idea, no, it's not. The more items you put in cart, the heavier it gets. The heavier it gets, the harder it is to pull. If it's hard to pull, you can't go up hills. I actually traveled, I picked up silver from here, and from here I traveled with with the cart. It was absolute nightmare. Don't do that. Don't don't try. It's it's no no. It was faster with the feet, even way faster if I took a boat and, and go went with the ship so yeah that's the advice use the ship for transportation simple as that moving on the last point oh i can make it in one one hour great bosses are the key there are five bosses and every single one of them you can reveal where they are and, and all that that is cool what i'm trying to explain is every single one of them holds a key or item or unlockable for you to progress further don't try to trick the game and bypass it. You actually will lose more than you gain. For example, there's a meadows. Next one is black forest. Then in order, there is a um, plain swamp. Afterwards, mountains. After mountains, there's plains. That's the order. Me and my friend, obviously, went with, in meadows, black forest, and then pff, there's a winter right here next to the base. Obviously, that's let's go there. And we skipped kind of swamp and swamp boss oh my god the troubles we couldn't find the silver and everything and everything and afterwards we get the bo got the boss they're like oh the game intends to go you in order so yeah do that otherwise the bosses are um, blocking your progress that's it so yeah guys these are all my tips i wish i knew sooner but now i know and now i pass the knowledge to you for every new awesome vikings that are coming and playing this awesome game this is an awesome game and with these 40 tips basically you are good to go explore and you're ready vikings and as you know 
We will always meet in next videos. If you have any questions down in the comment section and of course liking and sharing the video uh, always helps. That's huge thanks for everyone who does that. So yeah, thank you. And I will end at precisely one hour. Cheers.